Man, hi everyone. It is Uwi Tepo here, and I am so excited to um, take some time to share the word of God with you guys today. Um, once again, I'm coming in with um, a word for April. Before I get into the word, I just want to pray, and then we can get right into it. In the mighty name of Jesus, God, we are so thankful for your love. We are so thankful that you are unchanging, Papa. I just ask in the name of Jesus that you prepare our hearts and our ears for your word. I pray, Lord, that um, as we are listening, Redeemer, whatever resonates with us, may we receive it, may we take it in, Father God, and may we bring it back to you so you may confirm it and so you may fulfill it in the mighty name of Jesus. We thank you, Lord, and we lift your name up on high. Unblock our ears and heal our healing so we may hear you clear, clearly. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen and amen. So awesome. Let's just get right into it. So you have home court advantage. Funny enough, this is actually the last word he gave me. He gave me this word on Monday. Um, and today is Wednesday. He gave me this word on Monday in prayer that you have home court advantage. Um, so some of us are looking at the giants that are opposing us and we are spending a good amount of time amazed or bewildered or even marveled at how large these giants are. For some, it has reached a point where in comparison, you feel like an ant to this giant. You feel like an ant to this challenge or this problem or even just this breakthrough that you are waiting for. So in some instances, you are like the other 10 spies that surveyed the land and couldn't help but come back with a bad report. So these giants are, as I said, great challenges that seem impossible. They are hurdles that look larger than life. And you may wonder how you are going to get around this. And you tell yourself that this situation truly needs a miracle. And you are right, it does need a miracle. It does need a miracle. And that's exactly what the Lord is going to do for you. But you are also forgetting that with that very miracle that the Lord brings your way, you will need confidence. You will need boldness. And in some instances, a slingshot and a pebble to overcome what is against you. There will need to be a first step on your part, right? To partner with the Lord as he brings in this miracle. And that first step or that first action or that um, action of faith or that prophetic move in the name of Jesus, thank you, Lord, will need your confidence, will need your boldness in the name of Jesus. And for some of you, it will need exactly what you have you don't need more you just need that slingshot you just need that pebble in the mighty name of jesus so the lord wants to remind some of you today that just like david you have home court advantage and just like the children of israel you have home court advantage as large as those giants may seem whether it's your finances your health whatever it is whether it's your family issues your promise is still your promise. Whether it's your love life, your promise is still your promise. Amen. Whether it has to do with your ministry or your business, your children. Amen. Your promise is still your promise. Take your land. It is your reward. Hallelujah. The second word... Um, that the Lord gave me, and it's kind of a long word, but I pray that you guys just um, are a bit patient with me because it's, it's, it's a word that we need. So last week, the Lord showed me a vision, right? And in this vision, I saw a calloused, dried out wound on an ear. So this person was trying to clean out the wound, but they were struggling. And the wound was not only big, but it was also pink and completely dried out. So eventually, once they started um, using the correct solution for their ear, 
That is only when the dirt began to wipe off. So it was very clear that what was what caused this wound was constant rubbing and friction and even pressure on that particular part of the ear. And as I woke up, this vision really troubled me. And as I meditated on it, the Lord led me to Acts 28, verse 26 to 27, and Isaiah 1, verse 6. So I'll be reading this in the Amplified Version. Um, and keep in mind, you know, when I saw this vision, I had no idea that um, what I was seeing was a calloused wound. All I knew was that this wound is completely dried out. And it's it's not even a scab. It's almost like... You know, like uh, corns on your feet or something. It, it just seemed like a wound that has been exposed to so much friction to the point where um, what was once a wound is now just really thick, really dried out skin. Um, so the wound has not healed at all. It's just covered in really, really thick, really dried out skin. So I had no idea that this term was calloused. So as I read Acts 28 verse 26 to 27, the Lord gave me so much clarity about um, what I had just saw, um, what he, he had just shown me. So this is in the Amplified Version. It reads, go to this people and say, you will keep on hearing, but will not understand. You will keep on seeing, but will not perceive. For the heart, the understanding the soul of this people has become dull or calloused. And with their ears, they scarcely hear. And they have shut their eyes to the truth. Otherwise, they might see with their ears. Sorry, they might see with their eyes and hear with their ears and understand with their heart and return to me. And I would heal them. The minute I saw that word calloused, I knew I had to look it up. I knew I had to look it up. But let me just read Isaiah 1 verse 6 for us. Um, it reads, From the sole of the foot, even to the head, there is nothing healthy in the nation's body. Only bruises, welts, and raw wounds, not pressed out or bandaged, nor softened, nor softened with oil as a remedy. Amen. So the Lord began to minister to me about how the hearing of his children has become calloused. I had no idea that what I saw in this vision was actually a calloused wound. But when the Lord pointed this word out to me from Acts 28 in the Amplified Version, I looked up what the word calloused means. So when a wound has calluses, it has formed a hardened, tough, and usually painless thickening of skin. And this skin has been exposed to repeated external pressure or friction. Now listen to this. When a person is described as calloused, they are seen as insensitive, uncaring, unbending, careless, impassive, stubborn, indifferent, hard-hearted, and hard Headed. The Lord began to reveal how this insensitivity and hardened heart is specifically located in the area of kingdom marriage. The Lord is setting the record straight. He is in charge of your love story. You are not in charge nor is any minister or prophet. Your story will not be like others. So stop relying on the word or the opinions of others and seeing them as blueprints to how the Lord should do it for you. That is a word for someone. The Lord also says, my children are struggling to hear me in this area. Their ears are their ears are hardened by exhaustion, disappointment, and for some even deception. What I have for you 
is so incredibly unique and unusual. You cannot possibly move to the rhythm of anyone else's drum. The Lord is saying for some of you, slow down. The time is now for you to hear me, for you to hear me personally. But you are going to have to let go and let me do it. Stop trying to put your hands on it. Stop trying to figure it out. Your itchy ears, and this is for some of us, your itchy ears will only lead to further indifference to my voice. And your impatience will only lead to disappointment. I am singing a new song, says the Lord. I am singing a new song of love and freedom over the lives of so many. And it's calling some to let go of words they believed were for them or even words they believed were from me. But why aren't my children listening? Why aren't they moving? Why are they so impassive and so unbending? I am healing the calloused ears of my children. I am healing the hardened ears of my children. All I ask is that they begin to clean out the dirt, says the Lord. Clean it out. Lean into the sensitivity of this time. I am healing the calloused ears. You will hear me clearly and you will begin to understand in full that I am a good God and I am not holding anything back from you. I am in charge of your love story and everything that is mine belongs to you, says God. Ooh. Guys, calloused ears cause us to be unbending. It causes us to hold on to a word, even when the Lord is clearly saying to us, that is not yours, let it go. Calloused ears cause us to hold on to people, even when the Lord continuously says to us, let it go. Calloused ears cause us to be so disappointed in the time frame or the process that this is all um, happening in, that even when the Lord comes to actually give us a word about this particular thing, we choose not to receive it. We, it's like our hearts are not fertile. Our hearts are hardened. So because we've been taking in so much that has actually, in essence, been irritation and friction to our hearing, now that it is actually time to hear or when it is time to hear from the Lord, we refuse to hear or we are unable to hear because our hearts and our ears are so hardened, so hardened by disappointment, so hardened um, by confusion and, and irritants, right, that causes calluses that we struggle to hear what God is actually saying. We are struggling to even discern when it is God, when it is people, and when it is us, or when it is the enemy, we struggle so hard, we struggle so much. So the Lord is saying that he is coming down to heal our calloused ears that are causing us to be unbending and causing us not to budge. And I also believe that has, this has to do with a lot of facets in our lives. It's just that he highlighted this facet of marriage, but this is also the facet of, of just the promises over our lives. There are so many things that we might have believed, right? God should do for us. And maybe he hasn't done it in the time we wanted him to do it. And that has caused so many of us to be like, you know what, whatever. To the point where even when you are feeling that um, urging of the Holy Spirit to watch a particular word or someone comes and they share a particular word with you, it's so easy for you to be like, oh yeah, cool, whatever, you know. Because your ears are calloused, your heart, your heart is hardened, right? And um, we do it even in the guise of saying, I'm protecting myself, you know, I'm, I'm done with all these things or whatever the, I'm done with whatever, you know, um, but it's because our ears are actually hardened. Yes, we need discernment. Um, yes, we need wisdom to see 
what is ours or hear what is ours and hear what is not ours and be able to tell the difference. But the Lord is asking us to come back into a place where our hearing is sensitive to him. The word says that his sheep hear his voice, right? And we do not hear the voice of a stranger in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Hallelujah. So we rebuke the hardness of the heart in the name of Jesus. And we ask the Lord to heal our calloused ears. We ask the Lord to bring back the sensitivity of our hearing so that as he speaks, we may hear even if he is speaking about a particular matter that we have been disappointed in in the past, we will hear him now because the time is now. And when we receive these words, we will, we, we will take them in and accept them. And then our hearts will be fertile soil to those words in Jesus' mighty name. Hallelujah. Okay, so the third word, and this is the second last word. Um, the Lord actually gave me this word in February, and I remember sharing it very briefly on a Zoom call that we had, um, but um, he brought it back for this month, and, and I am so grateful for the confirmation that he has given me about this word, and I'm, I actually love this word so much. So the Lord is saying that your labor is being induced, and I pray that someone catches that. I pray that someone catches that. Your labor is being induced induced the lord says reduce so that i may induce reduce so that i may induce and um the scripture he gave me for this word is john 3 verse 30 um which reads he must increase in prominence but i must decrease amen so more of god less of me more of god and less of me hallelujah so may some some of you may be asking okay how does the lord expect me to reduce how do i become less of me and more of him um i know for me personally in this time it has looked like consecration and praying in the spirit amen and what i love so much about praying in the spirit um and when i mean praying in the spirit particularly i mean praying in tongues is that it also allows us to rest in God, you know. It allows us to say, you know what, Lord, um, you take over and, and you pray what is on the heart of the Father in the name of Jesus for my life and the lives of others. Um, and what I have found um, as I have leaned into praying in the Spirit more is that there is a pushing that is taking place in this time of prayer. Amen. So, there are two induction processes that the Lord is referring to in this word. Um, so as you read you, so the Lord can induce, there are two induction processes. There are two inducing states, right, that the Lord is referring to. The first one is labor induction. So this is when um, we know in the natural, when labor is being induced. So this is where there is artificial stimulation. I mean, I got this on um, Google, right? So this is when there is artificial stimulation of uterine contractions to achieve birth before labor begins on its own. So before labor begins naturally, um, the doctors or the nurses or whatever give us medication, right? So that the labor process can begin before its time so the lord is stimulating birthing in this hour amen and in those of you who have gone beyond your due date he's also stimulating so this is what happens in in, in um inducing labor it's either the mother has been carrying this baby for far too long the baby needs to come out right now or there's maybe an issue right with um, the mother's womb or the size of the baby. So it means that we actually have to induce labor early. And this is what the Lord was just showing me in this time. So he is stimulating birthing in this hour in those who have gone beyond their due date. And for some, the stimulation is an early induction. And this early induction is actually the Lord bringing early mercies into your life. Hallelujah. So it's almost like he's looking onto your 
situation. He's looking on to your state and he's saying, I need to do this now for my child. I need to um, perform or fulfill this thing right now for my child and, and, and um, bring this early induction. Amen. So um, the word he gave me was Isaiah 66 verse 9, which reads, Shall I bring to the moment of birth and not give delivery, says the Lord? Or shall I go, ooh, sorry, or shall I, who gives delivery, shut the womb? Let me read this again. Shall I bring to the moment of birth and not give delivery, says the Lord? Or shall I, who gives delivery, shut the womb, says your God? Amen. So the Lord is calling so many to birth in this month of April. And let me confess something to you guys. This was actually a word that the Lord gave me in Feb, as I said. Um, and then last month, March, a friend of mine brought this word back to me in a dream she had about me. And my hearing was calloused um, when she gave me that word. Because when she gave it to me, I was just like, oh, cool, thanks. You know, and I moved on um and then the lord had to bring someone else someone complete in fact in a whole new different part of the world to send me the same scripture and say Ubi um i hear the lord saying this for you and that's when it hit me that man oh man my ears have been so calloused my ear my hearing has been hardened in the name of jesus but we are so thankful that the lord is um, healing our calloused ears so the lord is saying in jesus mighty name that he will not shut um the womb at your time of delivery because now is your time of birth hallelujah so now the second type of induction process actually looks like the lord inducting you into something new so it's more like you are the baby that is being birthed into something new and I saw this in a dream that he gave me. I saw a process involving the Lord, um, Jesus, in fact, um, bringing forth, I don't know, it's almost like he was propelling people rather into something new or propelling and carrying us through with so much speed to the point where there was even a breaking of glass ceilings in the name of Jesus. So I do believe that the Lord is saying that there will be a propelling and an inducting ceremony for so many of you in this month of April. And this um, inducting will also be a breaking of glass ceilings for so many. In Jesus' name we pray. Hallelujah. So the last word that the Lord gave me, and you know, it's such a good word, but I, I won't lie to you guys. I was a bit like, even scared to release the word because I was like, oh Lord, how are people going to take this word? Um, but once again, he reminded me of the word he gave us for 2022, right? That he will be um, opening up our mouths. In fact, he instructed us to open up our mouths and taste that he is sweet. Open up our ears and see that he is sweet in the name of Jesus. So the Lord is, 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 just reiterating that for us in this month of April, that we will see how sweet he is. I saw how sweet the Lord is, was for me in March. The Lord was incredibly sweet. And that sweetness has actually carried on to the month of April. It's only the 6th of April. And I can already list down how sweet the Lord has been for me in tangible ways, guys. In tangible ways. Amen. The Lord is so, so good. So the word that... um. I'm just closing off this video with is the Lord is bringing honor and riches your way. The Lord is bringing honor your way and the Lord is bringing riches your way. Your head will swim. I got led to Amos 9 verse 13 to 15 and I want to just read it in the message version. It says, yes, indeed, it won't be long now. Amen. God's decree it will not be long now. Hallelujah. In fact, this morning, I was watching a series. And um, I was watching a series while also getting ready. So it was kind of like playing in the background. And I, I heard one of the characters in the series say, there will be no more delay, you know. And it stood out for me so much because just yesterday, I 
was like in fact this morning i was going through like a website you know looking for um a certain scripture and um one of the scriptures i saw from revelations i can't remember exactly which one it was but it's when jesus was saying there will be no more delay so when i heard it from him i was like oh that mm, there's, there's a weight on that you know so I'm, I'm i'm just led to share that with you guys there will be no more delay so yes indeed it won't be long now that is god's decree things are going to happen so fast your head will swim you know i also feel led to say i sense that the lord is also repeating some words that he's already spoken to us about so this um word about the lord making our heads swim this is a word that we've already heard so many times hallelujah this word about reducing so the lord can induce this word about us birthing in this time right is a word that the lord has spoken to us at least in this in our own ministry in this ministry here a journey to purity he's repeated this before more than once probably right and i believe he's doing this because he wants us to go back to a place where our ears are sensitive to him so it means that the first time he said it maybe we received it but because maybe things didn't happen the way we wanted it to happen our hearts grew cold and hard and now he's coming back to repeat it because he's saying make your hearts fertile make your ears or your hearing soft again so you may receive what i am saying i am bringing honor to you i am bringing riches to you that sounds so good to be true it sounds too good to be true but guess what that is what i'm speaking over your life in the mighty name of jesus your head will swim so yes indeed it won't be long now god's decree things are going to happen so fast your head will swim one thing fast on the heels of the other you won't be able to keep up everything will be happening at once everywhere you look there will be blessings blessings like wine pouring off the mountains and hills sorry the mountains and hills i'll make everything right again for my people israel amen so many people need the lord to make things right again hallelujah they'll rebuild their ruined cities they'll plant vineyards and drink good wine they'll work their gardens and eat fresh vegetables and i'll plant them plant them in their own land no more being foreigners god is planting you in your own land they will never again be uprooted from the land i have given them god your god says this the god of the universe the god your maker your creator says this to you hallelujah the god of abraham says this to you that you will not be uprooted from the land that he is giving you the lord went on to say to me i mean it i am giving you honor and riches i'm giving my children honor and riches there is a gift of prosperity that is diligently and quickly coming to overtake you it is seeking for you diligently and it will find you and as it finds you in the name of jesus be ready for success be ready for profitability hallelujah be ready for riches be ready for fortune guys when the lord says he's bringing honor and riches i i i it is not a figurative thing he's not talking about something that is figurative he's actually talking about honor and riches right in the mighty name of jesus in the name of jesus so he's bringing success profitability riches fortune ease comfort security well-being milk and honey and speed your way and this is how the Lord will show you in this month and in the year of 2020 that he is a sweet God because success, profitability, riches, fortune, ease, comfort, security and well-being, milk and honey and speed belong to you in the mighty name of Jesus. I do not know about you guys, but that is a word that I am willing to grab and run with in the name of jesus i pray that that blesses you please take these words to the lord and be blessed by these words love you guys
Bye.